So I wanted to begin this video off by making the preface it that I am a very deeply religious and devout Catholic, and I have no ill intention towards those who are religious, but I wanted to address something, some fake crocodile tears that come out of uh, Protestant media in America, especially the more Calvinist type that dominates the American religious struggle that really doesn't believe in any one true faith as long as people believe in something, which has really just irritated me over the years because it levels out all religions to be equal, at least in their eyes. And I have came upon this article by Fox News, which is which is definitely controlled by the conservative wing of the pause. And they're talking about Russian victory in Ukraine would be a disaster for religious freedom. Now, I don't know what's your opinion upon the American idea of all religions are created equal, yada yada, that bullshit. But there is something to be said about just the crocodile tears that come out of all of our media about it. Pro-Putin breakaway regions that forced churches, mosques, and synagogues to re-register with authorities using former houses of worship as military facilities. So, I mean, using military, using them as military facilities in time in time of war when you're outnumbered ten to one, and surrounded and being shelled by Ukrainian artillery in the Donbass region, um. It kind of levels the playing field that anything is a target, even religious structures, and you got to defend them. And also making them re-register under a new government. I mean, that's not oppression. Just saying. That's just, uh, you have to register with a new government that owns this territory. But I digress. So, a human rights expert has warned that Russia's victory in Ukraine would prove a catastrophic catastrophe for religious freedom considering Russian President Vladimir Putin's record and the record of the pro-Putin breakaway regions in Ukraine. What, because he's a devout Orthodox Christian and he has no tolerance for the American Protestant cult system? I, I mean, if you look back, Russia does label many of our, uh, many of our Protestant sects as cults. And they don't allow them in Russia for understandable reasons, because frankly, if you already have a state religion and suddenly this more cult acting like religion comes in, you're not going to allow it. <laughs> and they don't believe in religious freedom. They believe in they believe that there is one truth and that truth should be obeyed. <laughs> and that truth is Russian orthodoxy. I'm I'm sorry, Protestant crocodile tears. If Ukraine falls, it will be a complete religious freedom catastrophe for countless faith communities. Faith communities. <laughs> I, I hate that word, too. This word just means that you can believe whatever you want, and everybody is an atom, and there's atomized communities that are separate from each other. They don't believe in the same thing at all. So, but they all should be respected because all of them are equal for some unknown reason because apparently everyone comes to the truth in completely different ways, so truth is very arbitrary. Well, let's continue. Tina Ramirez, president of the executive director of Richmond, Virginia-based human rights nonprofit Hardwired Global. Hardwired Global. I, I have no idea what that is, but it sounds like some weird NGO company. For evidence, we need look no further than what is already in the case in Russia itself and in its Russia-controlled Ukraine regions, Luhansk and Donbat, Donbat, ah, Donetsk. I keep on mispronouncing it. <laughs> okay, this is gonna this is gonna make me crack up because I don't like uh, I don't like these people either. Media source media sources religious freedom activists the OCU. Um, uh, OCU, I think that's one of the Orthodox churches. Um, uh, Muslims, Protestants, and Jehovah Witnesses 
stated that Russia-backed authorities in Russia-controlled areas in Donetsk and Luhansk regions continue to exert pressure on minority religious groups. Yeah, well, they're not, they're not Russian. Like, they're not religiously Russian in that case. And these regions are 95% Orthodox, like, give or take some. Most of them are Orthodox, and then you see these other people saying that the Orthodox Church isn't incorrect, especially Jehovah's Witnesses, which are, I, I don't even think they worship Jesus. I, I think that on, I think that they're like Old Testament Christians that don't acknowledge Jesus as authority, or they just think that he was a man. Uh, I believe they're called Monophysites, um, but I could be wrong in that. And of course, Protestants were never, never loved in the former Russian Empire in the Soviet Union, which the Soviet Union didn't like any religion, but um, especially Protestants. Um, and they were never liked in Russia or historical Russian lands like Ukraine. Um, oh, of course, they're relying on a State Department report. That's, of course, not rigged. Um, authorities in the Luhansk People's Republic have perpetrated a ban on Jehovah's Witnesses and as, a, as an extremist organization, while the Supreme Court in the Dunask, Donetsk People's Republic, God, I keep on mispronouncing that, upholds a similar ban um, whom the U.S. does not recognize imp implemented laws requiring all religious organizations except the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the Moscow <laughs> um, uh, Patriarch to undergo state religious expert evaluation and re-registry. I honestly agree. If they are explicitly not part of your state religion, you just cannot allow them to operate freely. Like, that's just a simple fact, especially if they're spreading falsehoods like Jehovah's Witnesses, like saying Christ was not the son of God. I believe that's what they teach. Um, I mean, my interactions with Jehovah's Witnesses is honestly when they ask me, oh, do you have you whatever? I just tell them, you know, you guys are pathetic. Get the hell out of here. I've had two encounters with them. Same with Mormons. I've also just... When they ask me, oh, do you want to learn about Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? It's like, uh, do you want to learn about the actual Church of Jesus Christ with actual saints, a.k.a. the Catholic Church? <laughs> I have no patience for these people. No patience at all. According to the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, most religious groups recognized under Ukrainian law continue to be unable to re-register due to stringent legal requirements under Russian law. Well, yes, <laughs> Ukraine was part, Ukraine after 2014 was part of the pause and the pause, the, the subtle thing that liberalism does to a country is it first attacks religion and tries to make, make it so everybody is this atomized individual separate from everyone else. And then they say, well, all religions are equal. So, and it's a weird, it's a double speak. Because by saying that all religions are true, you're saying no religion is true. And that's what they always do. And Russia does not accept that, which I completely agree. You do not accept somebody saying that all religions are created equal because that means that no religion is valid. No religion is true. And when you do have a true religion, when you do exert its authority as the one true faith, you don't allow competitors like the Catholic Church is allowed to operate in Russia because fundamentally the Catholic and Orthodox Church are in schism with each other and they're not they don't contradict each other in terms of the sacraments or theology at least not too much there's like minor minor splitting hair differences but in the core sense of it they are exactly the same but if you introduce Protestants into their Protestantism rejects the sacraments, they reject the saints, they reject all the theology besides what books in the Bible they decided to keep in, and what book, and then they also tossed out a few books because they didn't agree with it. 
because apparently you can dictate your own theology and not God himself. So I'll continue. According to the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, yeah, also another pathetic organization that is illegitimate, most religious groups recognized under Ukrainian law continue... Oh, yeah, I already read that one. Um, yeah, and uh, the Russian military isn't going to tolerate these these uh, heretics. <laughs> and I'll, I'll use the term. They're heretics. Ukrainian bishop put... Putin is the antichrist of our, of our current time. Oh my god. Going with the antichrist route. I, I'm not quite the biggest shill for Putin. But I would say that he... I mean, he's not a good... He's not a good leader. But he at least window dresses in a way that is appealing more than our Western liberal elite that are just all a bunch of degenerates. And at least Putin exerts the authority of the Russian Orthodox Church, which I greatly appreciate in these trying times. Ramirez noted that many religious communities such as Seventh-day Adventists, oh my god, I've had too much interaction with them, and they are extremely cult-like. Um, they, uh, one, they're pretty much... Uh, shills for Israel. They are Old Testament Christians that pretty much deny 90% of what Christ taught and 90% of the established canon of Christianity. And instead they re instead they embraced, uh, they went to Saturday being the Sabbath, which that's why they call themselves the Seventh-day Adventists. And they still call it the Sabbath. Um, I, I officially don't know the theology behind that word. If the Catholic Church or Orthodox Church uses it, well, by that mean, I mean the apostolic faith. But uh, I digress. I absolutely have, I absolutely loathe these people. And I, w I pray for their souls to see the error of their ways. Same with Jehovah Witnesses, Baptists, Pentecostals, especially Pentecostals. Like, the reason why they are banned in Russia and Catholic uh, exorcists also express this very much. Pentecostals believe that they do actually get inhabited by the Holy Spirit, and then they start speaking in tongues. But most trained exorcists that walk into a Pentecostal service, in air quotes, they end up having to walk out because they know that they are chanting to Satan in dead languages and not talking in tongues like they believe and they are actively being inhabited by by satan and the evil spirits which that's why they are banned by russia and the orthodox church explicitly baptists are in the same boat and they are just within that small church protestant group um uh, and then muslims it's like there's only a few regions in russia that actually islam is allowed like uh chechnya which is like 90% Islamic, if I am remembering off the top of my head. But they're an autonomous republic that's essentially like a quarantine zone for most of the nation's Muslims. Um, yeah, they've been subjected to violence, arrest, and other congregation and under congre uh, congregation raided and had their congregations raided. You know, that's just to be expected, especially if you're proclaiming an illegal belief system. So I'm just going to agree with the state on that one in Russia. Um, frankly, I mean, I would ask what came upon that they deserved this, that they deserved the arrest and the violence and the raiding of their congregations. I would ask what prompted that because the Russian state is very reactive. They don't very they're not very proactive in terms of uh, enforcing things, especially if it's not causing a problem. But if something starts causing a problem, then they start doing arrests, they start they start raids, they start doing those things. Like you only see pro you only see protesters and ideological dissidents in Russia arrested if they 
are actively voicing against the state or actively causing a ruckus within Russia. If they aren't, they are left alone. And that's how those people typically are. But knowing Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah Witnesses, Baptists, Pentecostals, um, Muslims are more for the uh, their own terrorist tendency, especially within Russia. During the Chechen Wars, there were a lot of terrorist attacks, and that's why in Russia they have very strict laws against Islam, which is completely understandable. But, uh, yeah, I digress. Let's continue. If Russia takes Ukraine, we can fully expect the evil to continue to spread. You're labeling it as evil. And you can't evaluate your own, just your own reason within your head that the Russians already have the idea of what the truth is when it comes to theology. And they aren't accept, and you can't accept something that's alien, that's foreign, and wants to destroy, that wants to destroy the truth. And honestly, that's what Protestantism does, is it negates the idea that there is a truth when it comes to God. And it exerts that everybody can come to their own conclusion about God, which is highly, highly uh, dubious. I mean, it exists within Orthodoxy and Catholicism to very small extents, but only really amongst theologians. For the average laity, if you are not trained to understand God that well, and that's what Protestants don't understand is you need training to understand theology. You can't just open the Bible and understand, and everybody would understand it. It's a very, it's not meant for that. It was never meant for that. It was meant for a trained priestly caste to read, interpret, and, tr and translate to the laity. <clears throat> so, freedom of consciousness is the most fundamental of our rights and liberties. Whose rights and liberties? Who? Okay, the rights and liberties debate. You do not have inalienable rights whatever the fuck the american constitution says right the only right you have is to worship god and again you can only worship god in the right way so and liberties like the term liberty i mean it was used of course as part of the lingua franca before but it's really been distorted by these protestant by these Protestant naysayers, especially in America, these Calvinists, that say that we have a right to exist and spread our fault and spread our false teachings. When in Russia, you don't accept false teachings, and in Russia, you don't have the right to spread falsehood. It's just against the law. There is no such thing as freedom of speech. Not even in the West do we have freedom of speech. You're not allowed to say a lot of things, or else you get deplatformed. You get banned. You get ostracized by institutions. Yeah, no, there's no such thing as freedom of speech. Um, uh, and it is a foundation upon which our other rights are built. I mean, there are... The, the rights of people are given by God, and they're given to authorities to rule on God's behalf. I mean, this is why I'm a monarchist. Monarchs even take oath to defend the rights of their people, but then, of course, the rights are very much still restricted. You have rights within a certain window. So I'll leave that there. What you, th what you think, believe, and hold sacred, these are the things that distinguish us as human individuals. I mean, you have the right to be religious in Russia. You have the right to be an atheist in Russia. <laughs> it's just you are submitting to the Moscow patriarch. I'm... I'm uh, just saying, that's how it goes. It is, it is uh, Im imperative that we stand tall against the vicious, malicious forces that work to deny our most basic human dignity and rights. Whose? Is it this person? Yeah, I bet it's this person. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not going to comment on that one. So, uh, 2018 survey poll, poll found that 67% of the Ukraine's population identified as one of the strands of Orthodox Christianity. So there, you have the official state religion, even though it's not the official state religion of Ukraine, the de facto state religion Rus of Orthodox Christianity. Um, uh, also, 
it's Kiev, not Kiev. Um, uh, twenty-eight percent from the Ukrainian um, Orthodox Church. Um, twenty-three percent identifies Orthodox, so probably, I don't know. They probably are just like we shouldn't be a divided church. We shouldn't be divided between Ukrainian Russian Orthodox Church. <laughs> uh, of course. Of course they cover up the, uh, the Russian Orthodox Church with this acronym. This is the UOC-MP. That is the Moscow Patriarch, so that's the Russian Orthodox Church. And they're 12.8%, which lines up a lot with the Russian population of Ukraine. 7.7% of the population identifies as broadly Christianity. I'd guess that is the Protestant infiltrators. Um... Ukrainian Byzantine Rite Catholic Church makes up about 10%. Protestants make up 2.2%. This is also the registered Protestants. Um, Latin Rite Catholicism makes up 1%, which typically um, Latin and Latin Rite and Ukrainian Rite, like, yes, we're two different liturgical rites, but they're both under the Catholic Church, so um, uh, that 0.8 and that 9.4% could be combined there people that run these polls um islam which is i think this is mostly the tatar population of ukraine it's 2.5 percent still an insignificant population and uh the zionists make up uh 0.4 percent 11 percent declare themselves unreligious or unaffiliated i i think that's actually a lower rate than we have in the west like that's actually impressive for being a liberal nation like Ukraine after Euromaidan. Um, according to the U.S. State Department, uh, Russia has used a misinformation campaign to fuel further conflict between the Moscow, <laughs> you mean the Russian Orthodox Church, and the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, which split off from the Russian Orthodox Church in 2019. Which I think that was mostly because of state pressure. Because they had... I mean, a schism within the Orthodox Church between Ukraine and Russia, that is frankly disappointing. But this whole article, it's just a sham window dressing to condemn Russia more. Saying that, oh, we can't have our cult-like Calvinist-style Protestantism within your nation, so you are violating our human rights. It's like, no. You just don't have the right to be in Russia. Keep that American cult away from Russia. That's essentially what they're doing. That is exactly what they're doing. And it's us in the West that can't accept that there is one truth and not many truths that keep on pushing this narrative. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and hit that bell icon. I hope to be making more videos. I know I'm kind of bad about... <laughs> uploading videos but i promise to get more out it's just a matter of time but thank you guys and good night